We prepare for the coming of Christ as a Prince of Peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes to us in Christ. Today, we light the single, second candle of Advent the candle of peace. God has a dream for the world, and we dream it too. It's a dream of a peaceful world full of wolves and leopards and lions and eating and sleeping and dancing with the lambs and the kids and the calves. We dream of a peaceful world where nations come together, where war is a memory, and we eat at one another's table, and we recognize each other within our community as brothers and sisters. So we light this candle in that peace. On this day, we remember the Lord of all who brings peace that surpasses all understanding. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor he will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and from the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you but God will bring them back to you, home aloft in glory on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall re rejoicing. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Triconitus, and Licinius was tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. I did last week before I invite Julie, who's going to reflect on our scripture passages this week. I'm going to remind her about the nature of the Advent season. That we discussed, of course, the beginning of the new liturgical year, and that new year is characterized by the utilization of Luke's gospel as part of what is called the cycle C set of readings. Uh, Luke is often referred to as also as the author of the Acts of the Apostles, so often that's a, a correlation that's made. Again, this recognition of a number of different ways that distinguish this season of Advent, uh, one from Lent. Uh, Advent is often seen as an anticipatory season, whereas Lent is often referred to as a penitential season. Uh, the other thing that marks Advent as particularly different is the threefold nature of Advent. So Advent has its first and foremost essence as it approaches the Christmas season, one, uh, the anticipation and preparation of the coming of Christ at Christmas. Uh, two, uh, uh, the sense of the second coming of Christ, uh, which is something that the Christian community anticipated, and rather they anticipated in their lifetime that they would experience the second coming of Christ. So that uh, second element of Advent is just an awareness that the end times will come, uh, and, that, uh, and that to anticipate and prepare for that. The third nature of what Advent invites us to do to so always remind ourselves that we have a limited time on this earth, and we too have to always be aware and vigilant upon the times in which Christ uh, uh, will take, uh, t well, when we might be taken from this world uh, in some sudden fashion, in some, uh, in some sudden fashion. So, again, threefold nature of Advent, prepare our hearts for the coming of Christmas, prepare for the end of the world and the second coming of Christ, and to prepare for such a time in which we ourselves will be taken from our, our, this world. On that happy note, I'm going to invite uh, Julie Hadnath to come forward and share with us uh, her wonderful reflection on these readings and the season. Amen. Good day, St. Benedict family, and welcome to the celebration of the second Sunday of Advent. During the Advent season, we are invited to be joyful, to joyfully prepare ourselves for two things. One, the celebration of the anniversary of the first coming of our Lord Amen. Jesus the Christ. Amen. And two, the expectation of the second coming of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. And I'm sure I am not the only one wishing the second coming would hurry up Amen. and come. Oh, yeah. 
The world is so full of hurt people, hurting people, that I keep saying, Lord, I know there have always been hard times, trials and tribulations, but come now, Lord. Can't we hurry up and see Jesus' return sooner rather than later? Amen, yes. I, like Sister Fannie Lou Hamer, mm. am sick and tired of being sick, sick and tired. And tired. Amen. So I come to you on this second Sunday of Advent with a word to encourage myself, and I pray some of you. Mm. If we need a reason to possess joy, have hope, and not give up, even when the world around us seems to be falling apart, we need look to we need look no further than today's scripture readings for our nourishment and encouragement. The first reading Baruch chapter 5. Jerusalem could very well have said, Diocese of Oakland, mm. people of Alameda, citizens of California, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. For God will show you the earth, your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and that the age old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel, our people, may advance secure in the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, we can stand on God's word and we can show the world the splendor of his creation. We can advance in glory because we serve the most high God. Right. No amount of stress, worry and despair can stop the work that our Heavenly Father is doing in and through each and every one of us. What does St. Paul tell us in the second reading taken from his letter to the Philippians? He says, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. The responsorial psalm, which is Psalm 126, reminds us that the Lord has done great things for us. He has brought us a mighty long way. Therefore, we can be filled with joy, even in the midst of our tears and fears. We will be filled with laughter and our tongues can rejoice because ultimately, God will restore our joy, even if for a little while, we just can't seem to feel it. As I hear the words in today's gospel reading, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, Stri make straight his paths. I am reminded that one person really can make a difference in the world. One voice crying out in the wilderness to God, asking for strength, asking for courage, and the humility to do the work he has called them to do. 
to move forward in faith, to keep proclaiming the name of Christ Jesus in the face of every obstacle, every challenge, every rebuke, every failure, every missed opportunity. Yes, to keep living our lives as the Christians God has called each and every one of us to be. You see, church family, each one of us has a job to do. And that job is to own our faith, to live our faith, and to share our faith. We are responsible for it. It is not up to someone else to do the job and the work God has created us to do. John the Baptist knew what his job was, and he did it. He was not trying to do his father's job. He was not trying to do his mother's job. He was not trying to do Jesus' job. He did his job. Wow. One voice crying out in the desert. The power of one. God's word says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Mountains of self-doubt, fear, and anxiety. All because we have the power of one. God has the ability to use the power of one in each of us to start a movement to restore hope, to shine a light of love. Think about this. One woman's decision to carry a child, one voice crying out into the darkness to prepare the way of the Lord, one disciple's choice to leave everything behind, follow a carpenter's son, and proclaim the good news, one man's sacrifice of dying on a cross changed the trajectory of our lives for all eternity, all through the power of one. So we can do this. We can carry the light of Christ into a world that is in desperate need of some joy, hope, and most of all, love. And yes, one person can make a whole lot of difference. One person can change the world for somebody. One act of kindness, compassion, understanding, can begin to change all that we know and see. We must ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? Who will show Christ's compassion and love to a hurting world? If I, who espouse to be his disciple, won't do it, then who will? One smile can begin a friendship. One touch can show you care. One word can give encouragement. One light can wipe out darkness. One laugh can conquer gloom. One hope can raise our spirits. One sincere apology can heal a wound. One I'm sorry can mend a broken heart. One life can make a difference. Be that one today. Amen. 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 Okay. Let us offer our prayers in confidence like children who know that the Lord hears and answers them. That the church may grow in grace through this season of Advent as we prepare to greet the Lord Jesus when he returns. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may work together to attain peace with justice in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have separated themselves from the grace of God may find this season a time of reconciliation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own parish community, especially those who are sick, troubled, or bereaved, that they will be strengthened by the knowledge of Christ's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may find the fulfillment of their hope and rejoice eternally in heaven. And for the intentions of this Mass, offered for the 64th birthday of Mele Percival, and for the 39th wedding anniversary of Salomone and Mele Percival, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cause of beatification and sainthood canonizations for Pierre Toussaint, Julia Greeley, Sister Henriette Delel, Father Augustus Tolton, Sister Mary Lang, and Sister Thea Bowman, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Almighty and gracious God, you are our strength and our protection. Open our hearts to your grace and lead us to your kingdom. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord and let the church say, Amen. 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 Pray, my sisters, and pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh 
and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all of her people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share a sign of peace with each other. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be There's a voice that cries out in the silence, searching for a heart that will love him, longing for a child that will give him the room, give it all, he wants it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth, he's searching for a heart that is desperate. Longing for a child that will give a mirror, give it all, he wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me, serve me with your life, love. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. 
Let us pray. Lord, he wants it all. You want it all from us, each and every one of us. You want us to recommit ourselves each and every day to your son. You want each and every one of us to make a difference as we long for his coming in our own lives, as we long for his coming in our own world. We continue to be aware of his presence even in our own midst. Let each and every one of us make a difference in being his presence, your son's presence, the lives that we encounter, particularly these days, as lives seem to be so stressed and overwhelmed with the many ways in which this world is unfolding. Allow us always to be the one uh, that is your son's presence, of pre healing presence through the lives we touch. Enabled by both the word and the sacrament, may that sustain us in that particular challenge and journey. We ask all this in your son's blessed name. Let the church say, Amen. 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 Have a seat, choir. Thank you, as always. Julie, thank you, as always. There's always a... But it, amen, amen. You know, in light of kind of the music that we've done, this continued sense that we all have this challenge as individuals to de definitely make a difference these days. Oh, Lord, more than any other time. And thank you, choir. Uh, thank you, Leonard and Dorgan, for sharing that uh, last piece. That <laughs> thank you, choir, for your consistent, always loving presence and your willingness to lead us both in song and worship, so I'm grateful, profoundly grateful. Always grateful for uh, you, Ramel Lucas, for your goodness and your care. You're a, a gift and amazing presence. I'm really great, grateful. Don't know what we'd do without you, for sure. And of course, uh, Judy, I'm not sure we'd do without you either. Your presence and your consistent presence to us and your ministry of uh, proclaiming uh, continues to uh, lead us always in worship. It's good to have your son Justin here. Good, 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 good. Deke, thank you for being with us here, sir. And you, you, you as I always often say, you are the man. You are the man. You are the man. You are the man. <laughs> uh, not a whole lot of announcements, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, last week, uh, there has been the decision to go ahead because of the, in response to the voting that you have done to move the mass from midnight to 6:30. Aware of the particular struggles that our community, particularly our neighborhood, has had. Well, our city for that. Our world for that matter. Uh, but uh, my, my concern has always been for the safety of our prisoners, and so uh, 6.30 uh, will be the time of our uh, Christmas Eve vigil mass, and we will not have a midnight mass this year. Um, 
Again, to all of you who completed the survey, uh, those uh, results will be tallied and presented to the committee that I sit on. Uh, we will look at uh, that information as well as the information regarding the financial uh, status of all the parishes in the diocese, the uh, present October counts, which will include the online uh, records of all the parishes as well as the physical uh, attendance uh, October counts for all the parishes and the dioceses. The diocese, and we'll look over that over the next three months to make some determinations as far as uh, what recommendation we'll give to the bishop in parishes that we will uh, combine uh, or consolidate or perhaps even some other options as well. Uh, I, I pray, and I'm pretty sure we're okay at St. Benedict, but uh, you know, I gotta fight off some of these folks. I don't know. You gotta, yeah. So, anyway. Continue to be generous to our parish, both in your time, talent, and treasure. As Julie said, uh, every one of us make a difference. Uh, and the uh, wonderful difference, I hope, that St. Benedict is making in your own life, insofar as it's drawing you ever closer to Christ, uh, and the, the particular way in which we uh, express our love and worship uh, for Christ, uh, one that is unmatched by most other churches in the Catholic Church, I should say, uh, by the unique nature of who we are as a parish community, and the African-American lens by which our faith is expressed, uh, that that might be a, a way in which you as an individual, you as one, might help to support the work and ministry here at St. Benedict. So, uh, again, we uh, welcome your presence in this uh, Advent journey as we draw ever closer to our Christmas season. Uh, we're going to ask for God's blessings upon you. For those of you who are celebrating birthdays, we'll ask for God's blessing as well as sing a nice round of happy birthday. So let me uh, take care of that. God of all creation, we offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servants, who we call the day of their births, and rejoices in your gift of life and love, family and friends. Bless them with your presence and surround them with your love, that they may enjoy many happy years, all of them pleasing to you. We ask us through Christ our Lord and let the church say, Amen. Amen. I'd also like to invite God's blessings upon those of you who are celebrating anniversaries, significant dates and times you commemorate during this uh, season of the year that may be of importance to you. And let us pray. Lord, you allow us to give voice to and recognize specific dates that are meaningful for us as moments of, of commitment, whether it's commitment to you, commitment to another person, commitment to ourselves, commitment to a cause. Lord, may those dates and those commitments in that time be an opportunity for us to recognize vows uh, made in love, made in promise, made in perpetuity. Bless all those who celebrate significant days uh, and dates at this time, that you may bless them and the commitments they've made and, the, and enable them always to honor them uh, in your love and name. We ask this all in your blessed name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Just a real quick point. As you may have noticed, I take my mask on and off. That's a little different from uh, what I've done before. Uh, I've been made aware that I should probably wear a mask whenever I'm around uh, the elements, uh, bread and wine, so as to lessen any risk of communication of COVID. So in other times where there ain't nobody around me but my dear deacon, but he got a mask on anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. But so then I'll go ahead and utilize this format where there's no mask. Just to let people know, in case you're wondering, please stand. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
deep, deep, deep down in my heart. That the love of Jesus, 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 that the love of Jesus.